Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to scour the internet in search of the most heart-stoppingly beautiful guitars. I realize that I've done videos on guitars I hate and truly horrific guitars. It's time to cut out the negativity and inject some positivity into this rotting compost pile of a year that is 2020. But before we get into it, let me quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video Skillshare, an online learning community that offers membership to something with real practical value. There, there are countless classes ranging across the entire spectrum from how how to cook next level pasta to designing posters. I'll try to make my way through a Skillshare series every couple weeks as another means to inject positivity into my life. Recently, I finished off Interior Design Basics with Lauren Cox. Why am I watching a class on interior design? Well, because we're moving soon and I want my new studio to look as crisp as a fresh apple. While I actually don't really like Lauren's taste, she teaches theories about interior design that you can make work with your tastes, a concept that works well for me. Skillshare is incredibly affordable, costing less than $10 a month for unlimited access to their entire library. And for a limited time, you can use the link in my description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Anyways, let's move on and check out some smoking hot axes. And if it wasn't clear, I use the word axe like a lumberjack would use. YouTube, don't you dare age restrict me. To start things off today, we have the Gibson Modern, an instrument that I consider to be one of the coolest looking guitars ever made, a six string that I'm sure will be universally loved by everyone and not elicit a single comment to the contrary. The story behind these beautiful monstrosities is as interesting as the look. In 1957, Gibson applied for three guitar design patents that would go on to become the Flying V, the Explorer, and a third guitar known as the Modern that wouldn't go into production until decades later. Even though the Modern wasn't destined to hit shelves back in the 50s. There were a handful of prototypes built, but nobody knows what happened to them. One thing is for certain, there is tons of myth and legend that surrounds them, and if any of these originals were to show up, they would be the holy grail of collector's items. Now Gibson would go on to put the design into limited production a number of times starting in the 80s. Today you can buy an Epiphone Modern, and only recently did they discontinue a newer Gibson line. I can't tell you what it is about them that I personally love. I do have a soft spot for strange shaped Gibsons. I played a Modern from the 80s at Gibson's Nashville showroom a couple years back. It played great, it felt great. If they didn't go for upwards of six grand, I would probably own one by now. You can get a 2012 reissue for significantly cheaper, but without the funky headstock, it kind of loses the appeal to me. One day, maybe I'll treat myself. I also didn't mention this, but all the guitars I'm gonna be featuring today are guitars that I don't own. Otherwise, next up, we would be looking at the Reverse Flying V. I'm also not gonna be doing guitars made famous by someone else. Otherwise, this would just be a list of beat up old strats previously owned by guitarists named Stevie Ray. Next up on my list is a Seafoam Green Custom Shop Strat with a painted headstock. Painted headstocks on fenders tickle me in all the right ways. If you don't feel the same way, you're entitled to your opinion, but let me make the case for this guitar. <clears throat> What's wrong with you? Look again. It's amazing. Next up is the Martin D50, the highest end production model that Martin has ever made. At least I think this is the highest end model that Martin ever made. I didn't actually research that claim very thoroughly and I could be very wrong. This thing looks like it belongs amongst the crown jewels of the United Kingdom. Normally, I don't really like guitars that are this ornate, but it is just so over the top that it comes back around full circle into the realm of beauty for me. I wouldn't want to own one. There's something like $60,000. I mean, what do you even do with a guitar that valuable? The stress of having something that expensive in my possession would be way too much for me to deal with. However, I sure do like looking at pictures of it. Next up, I'm adding a guitar by a smaller Italian boutique manufacturer named Paoletti, their Nancy Lounge series with tonal chambers. I don't have much of a story or anything for this one. They sent me an email the other day saying hi. I checked out the guitars and this one stood out to me as the definition of good lookingness. Bigsby, P90s, and a color that is rare but also beautiful. And I mean, just look at this neck wood. That is fine neck wood. The Jaguar body isn't one that I'm typically drawn to, but with that semi-hollow feature, it stands out to me as the kind of guitar that had I seen it when I was 14 years old, I would have printed off a picture of it and taped it to my Trapper Keeper. Moving on, I'm putting a bass on my list because we can't forget about our lower octave buddies, the Stratty Chocolate 4 Fretless. I suspect this company is just one dude who makes these amazing basses at his home in Poland. I have no idea how I came across these, but they are absolute pieces of art. Every one of his instruments is something special. I personally really like this one because to me, it's as classy as you can get with that cello-esque body. It's simple, it's elegant, 
It's like a really nice chair that your grandpa built you, except for instead of sitting on it, you play it. I've watched a few videos of some dude dropping deep, dark, chocolatey fretless licks on this thing, and let me tell you, it sounds as good as it looks, especially since I go weak in the knees for a well-played fretless electric. Next up is a guitar that my girlfriend slash life partner slash co-parent of our child, Samurai Jenny, found on Instagram. And yes, she shows me pictures of guitars she finds on Instagram and tells me that I should buy them. I am very, very aware that I am the luckiest guy in the world. But anyways, enough of me trying to get some brownie points. The company is Millimetric out of Montreal up here in Canada. I love the Art Deco TV body shape and the weird looking pickups on this one. I was gonna buy one a few years ago, but the Luthier was working on the prototype for the trem arm. And now the waiting list is three years long and is also closed. Maybe if he sees this video, he'll bump me up the list. But actually that's not really fair to everyone else. But if it happened, I wouldn't complain. But for real, I actually don't expect this. I have enough guitars. Somebody else on his wait list will get more use out of one of those guitars than I would, so prioritize them. But one day, I will buy one. And if you've watched my channel for a while now, you can probably guess which guitar is last on my list for today, the Gibson ES-295 Scotty Moore Hollow Body. I made a video once talking about how this is my dream guitar. It still is, but I find them to be the most heart-stoppingly, jaw-droppingly beautiful guitars ever made. I've come across a few of these in the wild. The first time was when I was working in a guitar store and a lady brought one in that her dad had bought in the 50s to get it appraised. If it wouldn't have cost me my entire year's salary, I probably would have bought it then and there. Luck would have it that somebody traded in an Epiphone version soon after, which I did buy, but that didn't quite do it for me, so I sold that one on eBay. More recently, a couple years ago, when I did that video in the Gibson showroom where I played all their guitars, Gibson brought in an ES-295 reissue for me to play. I probably would have bought that one. However, the employee who set up that video bought it for himself. Most recently, I played one a year ago at Gibson's London showroom. I would have bought that one. However, I don't trust the airlines to bring things like that home safely. Also, it would have cost me an arm and a leg in duties to bring that into Canada. I'm telling you right now though, you can mark my words, my story with ES-295 has not ended. I don't know what the future holds for us, but there will be something there. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Heart-stoppingly beautiful guitars. I don't know how I feel about this video. It was fun to do, but now I wanna go and make some very poor financial decisions. I will tell you though, that a good financial decision is checking out the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, because their free trial is free. They really do offer a great product with something for everyone. I know that when I'm done shooting this video, I'm gonna see if they have any workshops on how to exercise self-control when dealing with gear acquisition syndrome. Thank you all for watching. If you wanna check out another video like this one, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for a wide range of musical content. If you wanna let me know what you thought about this video or if you wanna share with me a guitar that you think is heart-stoppingly beautiful, let me know in the comments. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist and I will see you again soon.